Hello, welcome back to Mark's Garden UK. This is my wildlife pond, and this is the most recent consignment of pond plants which I've received from pondkeeper.co.uk. Um, pondkeeper.co.uk, by the way, have given us an exclusive 10% discount code. Mark10 is the code. I'll put it in the description box below this video, but you get 10% off your first order with Pondkeeper. So have a look at Pondkeeper. I've been very happy with them, and they do a lovely free catalogue, so why not order that and have a browse? Now I found the process of choosing pond plants a little bit daunting and when you think about some of the names that you read uh, and I'll read a few out in a moment it's not surprising miniature pennywort water spearmint well that's reasonably self-explanatory pepper grass crystal confetti lesser water plantain white ragged robin common monkey flower and the list goes on um, and I found the whole process of actually choosing pond plants a little bit daunting. So I thought, well, what if I come up with some kind of mental thought process which will help me explain to myself how to go about choosing the right plants for my wildlife pond? And that's why I've called this video Choosing Pond Plants Using Nature Logic. Because what I've tried to do is I've tried to see the choice of pond plants in terms of what nature needs in a world in other words if i want wildlife and nature to habitat in my pond what do i have to provide for them in order to make that happen and that is informed which and what type of plant i have chosen for my wildlife pond so let me talk to you about that and exactly what i mean and put some meat on the bone so that you can understand i'll give you an example for example some insects will arrive at the pond to breed and they'll need something vertical like a reed to land on so that they can go down into the water and lay their eggs and once they've laid their eggs they'll emerge up the same reed and then fly off into the distance and those eggs will then hatch and the eggs will turn into larva which will live in the pond for its life cycle a couple of months perhaps and then those will turn into um, some kind of creature that needs to crawl out of the water and that's what it will do it will find that reed and it will crawl out up onto that reed and sit there and dry off and eventually perhaps its outer shell will be removed and dry off and fall off and it will fly off so having something vertical like a reed or an iris which goes into the water in the shallows is what nature requires and that's how nature thinks and that's nature logic so i'm just going to go through a few of the considerations which i've brought to the table when i've chosen the pond plants for my wildlife pond and let's start off with one of the basics life generally needs oxygen so you need some plants oxygenators which will put oxygen into the water so this little one here and this one these are both on the list of oxygenating plants and they will uh, thrive in the water and as they do so they will photosynthesize and put oxygen into the water for all those little organisms and the other plants to feed off because oxygen is an important part of life and as i'm speaking to you at the edge of my wildlife pond i'm delighted to tell you and you won't be able to see it because it's too small as a damselfly just landed on a rock there i'm going to get the camera and see if we can capture it before it flies away and that is actually laying eggs it's as we speak laying its eggs into the water surface and you can hopefully you'll be able to see that and this is one of the beautiful things about my wildlife pond i'm delighted to have captured that that's exactly why I've created a wildlife pond. And that was on a little bit of pond plant. And that just proves the point, does it not? That you need to cater for the wildlife that you want to inhabit your wildlife pond. Hope I've got some good footage of that to show you. Um, getting back to the plot, those oxygenators will also grow and cover some of the pebbles on this beach. And that will provide cover for organisms and invertebrates so again it's serving several different purposes so you need some plants around the water's edge to provide cover for frogs for toads for newts for insects all the wide range of creatures that nature has will need some cover so these which are also oxygenators will expand out and multiply and propagate themselves and provide cover 
Now, these plants will also produce flowers. And what do flowers uh, attract? Well, flowers attract pollinating insects. So this pond will become a magnet for pollinating insects. Well, why does nature want pollinating insects to come to a water hole like this? Well, it's all part of the food chain. Birds will come and eat the insects. And the insects will also be eaten by fish. And the fish will excrete in the water. And all the microorganisms in the water will feed off that excretion. So it's all part of a virtuous cycle. So yes, the pond will have flowers and it will want to attract insects to uh, the water's edge. And whilst we're talking about insects, I'm looking down into the shallows here. And again, if, if it stays still long enough, I'll try and get the camera. But right here in front of my eyes is a little water beetle. How has that got there? Because I've not put water beetles in this pond. But there's several different types of water beetles in here already of several different shapes and sizes. And we'll endeavour to get one, some footage of one, before the end of this video. So now again, going back to the plot and the requirements of nature. I've left some long grass around the edge of here and I will also put some irises into this boggy area and that long grass again will provide shelter and breeding spaces for other different types of insects and it's also useful to have little crevices around the water's edge. That was a chicken in my neighbour's garden you just heard squawking. Um, so it's also useful to have crevices in and around these rocks at the water's edge and I will plant into them so that there's a, a kind of an interface between the hard landscaping and the water and that interface is kind of like a, a wildlife corridor running down so insects that spend half their life on water on land and then want to go in the water to breed can use that as a little corridor and by the way as I'm sat here this rock is absolutely covered in bird droppings birds are also part of wildlife and I've seen dozens of different types of birds coming down here they sit on these rocks they have a drink they jump down into the shallows they have a bath and again that's wonderful because that's all part of the circle of nature that I wanted in my wildlife pond so moving on water lilies why do we have water lilies well the water surface is a big expanse and on a hot day the water will evaporate so one of the other one of the functions that a water lily will uh, carry out was it will be to cover the water surface and reduce evaporation but another thing it does is it acts as a kind of a, a shade provider and it stops the sun's rays from penetrating into the water because too much light there down there will cause an imbalance it will cause a bloom of algae so it's good to have a water lily to cover they say that you should have two-thirds of your water surface covered to have a balanced pond because you don't want too much of the sun's rays going in there and providing too much light energy for the algal bloom. Now, the water lily leaves will also provide a landing pad for more insects to come down. And I've seen many wasps, they land on the middle of the, the uh, water lily and then they crawl out to the edge and they have a drink and then they buzz off. And there'll be insects underneath there as well, water insects using the water lily as um, a shelter. And I've paused for a moment because as we are speaking, a pond skater, in fact, there are two pond skaters in the process of breeding have just hopped onto that water lily. And again, I'm going to try and get the camera and try and show you. Let's see if we can get some footage. And I'll move in very, very carefully and slowly. And hopefully I won't disturb them. And um, it's just there on the corner of that water lily to the right hand side. And there they are, uh, pond skaters or water boatmen. And there's another one here, just on the crack there, just between the other one. So again, more nature arrived from where? I don't know. And I don't know if you can see it, but if I reposition the camera across the surface, there are millions of insects, flying insects. Um, just hovering around and buzzing around in the air just above the water's surface. That's wonderful because they will go in and they'll lay eggs and those larvae will feed other organisms in the, in the water. And also swallows and swifts will scoop down and eat those insects as will the bats in the night time. So again we've got part of a food chain going on. So water lilies to cover the water's surface. 
Now this mat here, this mat of pond plants here that I'm about to show you, that will expand and creep out and it will cover the whole of the pond liner that you can see around the edge of the pond here. And there won't be any pond liner um, visible within a few months time. That's my objective. Not only will it protect the pond liner, but it will provide an environment for lots more wildlife. So again, I've positioned lots of little clumps of pond plants around the edge here, which will expand and grow out and uh, provide shelter and cover for the wildlife. Now there's a plant here in my most recent consignment of pond plants from pondkeeper.co.uk called a brook lime. And this is well known for being one of the plants that newts love, because what they do is newts lay their eggs underneath a leaf and then they fold that leaf until the egg is hatched. So the, the newt will fold the leaf over and hide its egg in the, in the creased up leaf and brook lime is a brilliant plant for that now. Look at this. I'll bring that a bit closer. Look how quickly that will spread. You can see there, hopefully, underneath there, there are already wonderful, plentiful root systems growing off that. So if I plant this into the pebble beach here, as I will do, that will grow off into the, into the water. And as it grows, it will take the excess nutrients out of the water and create balance in the water and again that's part of what nature needs it needs plants that will clarify and purify the water and i'm sure you're probably aware of this but watercress is another one of those plants that looks a little bit like that great in running water creeps out and purifies the water to these wonderful fine filament roots can you see there Now, another consideration for nature is food. And some of these plants are a food source. In fact, some of them are a specific and only food source for certain insects. For example, um, this one here, the cuckoo flower, beautiful little plant. But when you read the label, it says, is one of the food plants of the orange tip butterfly. Now, orange tip butterflies are quite rare. However, purely by coincidence, I was walking along my local canal the other day and I saw an orange tip butterfly 100 metres in that direction. One of my objectives now is to attract an orange tip butterfly to this pond with cuckoo flower. So that will be going in the margins of my pond. So there's my little video on how to choose pond plants using nature logic and i've typed all those little bits of nature logic uh, on a piece of paper here and i'll put that in the description box below this video nature logic to me is thinking how nature would think so if you want to put pond plants in your pond you have to think about what nature needs in order to live happily here there's a butterfly just to my left i'm reminded of that poem happiness is like a butterfly by Browning where you can chase happiness all day long but sometimes it's best if you just wait for it to come and land on you anyway I digress once again so this list of um, nature logic it's things like survival food shelter reproduction escape plants which provide oxygen plants which provide a medium for breeding and laying eggs plants which stop the water evaporating um, plants which provide a medium for basking in the sun or just resting and plants which remove poisons and maintain the balance uh, we talked about that butterfly plant which is a food source for the orange tip butterfly plants which create a scent which attract insects which then become part of the whole virtuous ecosystem around the pond so there we are i'll put that in the description box below this video along with the website for Pondkeeper and the discount code and I think the overall message really is think about how you can cater for nature's needs and if you want a wide-ranging 
biodiverse ecosystem are in, in and around your pond, then you need to cater for all those different needs and bring lots to the table for them to live off because that's what nature needs to survive. And if you build it, nature will come as we've already seen with the water beetles and the pond skaters and the damselfly and the birds. It's all around here already. We just need to wait for that orange tip butterfly. Hope you've enjoyed that. I'll see you soon for some more wildlife pond adventures. Bye for now.